Well, a new academic paper released earlier this spring has some discouraging news about Europe's experiment with mass immigration. The paper looks at 25 years of labor market data in Norway, and it finds that while they initially get jobs and assimilate into the nation's economy, immigrants from poor countries ultimately become less integrated over time. We've seen this in other countries as well. The longer migrants spend in Norway, the less likely they are to hold jobs and the more likely they are to be dependent upon government welfare. Katie Hopkins is a global columnist for DailyMail.com, and she joins us tonight. Katie, does this surprise you? It doesn't surprise me at all. It's something we've seen here in Britain for a long time. I've always maintained multiculturalism doesn't work, that in fact what we end up with is a nation of ghettos. I think that's true here in the UK. And I think what we see is that migrants arrive, and typically because we now have so many economic migrants who haven't actually suffered war or endured real hardship, that they really want to create a country within a country. They don't see Islam as compatible with Western culture, Western values. So actually, they would rather live alone, separate from our society. Certainly around 23 percent of British Muslims have said that they would prefer and look to live under Sharia law rather than any laws that we have here. So I certainly feel that when people talk about integration, for me, I always hear the word colonization, because I think that's what's happening across Europe, as we have opened our arms and our borders and told everyone to come and effectively take over. So if you're going to do that, if you're going to bring people into your country in large numbers, don't you have some obligation to help them become part of your culture? Because countries in which nobody has anything in common fall apart. What are the European authorities doing to inculcate their values in these new arrivals. Absolutely. And you would think that, wouldn't you? You'd think we would kind of maybe have some lessons on British values, help individuals integrate by kind of showing them our ways and enabling them to join them. I see the complete opposite happening, actually. I see that we have to bow down uh, to the cultures that come to join us. I believe we spend far too much time tiptoeing around the cultures of the people that choose to join us far too little time standing up for the cultures that have chosen, you know, they've chosen to join. I think we need to stand up for our culture and ask people to integrate into it. But I certainly don't see that happening. I think people, you know, are punished for looking Islamophobic if they try and stand up for British values. And that's why things like having the flag or national flag, um, having the English flag, the George Cross, you know, that's seen now as kind of being almost verging on racist, potentially certainly Islamophobic, because we're not then embracing these new cultures that come so, to join us. So it's more offensive to the British ruling class and British authorities to be anti-Islam than it is to be anti-Britain. Absolutely. You know, I know the tick list of correct answers that the liberal fascists want me to answer. I know what they'll approve of. I know what they like. And that's endless gushing sympathy for migrants, economic migrants, for the Islamic faith. You saw with the Westminster terror attack here, you know, the very first media that we had off of that was that we had to look out for our Muslim counterparts because they may be kind of under some kind of uh, attacks following the terror attack on us. It's always that idea that we need to bow down to the culture that joins right. us. And we never seem to stand up for the culture they've chosen to join. And it's one of my big questions always, is if Islam is so fantastic, why do Muslims always seem to want to come to Christian countries? And it's a, it's a question that I never have got an answer to yet, Tucker. It's a great question. And an awful lot's at stake, like a thousand years of history. You take it seriously, and I appreciate that. Katie, thanks for joining us. Thank you very much.